We welcome everyone to this August 28th meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular meeting and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The board's role is to set a goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems, management and responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values. And we appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. Now, we're going to do, uh, be led in the Pledges of Allegiance by the Corsicana Middle School. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. I need, I'm starting to need readers. Uh, Tony McCallan, Lainey Walker, Gary Venish, T, uh, Tag, is it Tagan? Hodges, Leslie Sigaroa, and Marion Saunders. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And from Northside Baptist Church, Associate Pastor of Spanish Ministries, uh, Raj Kripalani. Let's pray. Our only wise God, our help, our Lord, our everything. We thank you. We thank you for this board. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your service. Thank you for this time, oh God. And we just commit this session into your hands. May you lead us, may you lead them wisely, humbly. May you lead them in truth, in grace, for the love of the children. Thank you, and we just commit this session into your hands. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. All right, the superintendent's report. Good evening. I just want to welcome everyone, and I want to thank you for being here, um, especially our students and our students' parents. We appreciate your time, and we appreciate your leadership in our district. Today is our 10th day of school. We have an enrollment of 6,091 students. And we have a lot to celebrate. First of all, our varsity tennis team, um, Mr. Lennox called him a district favorite, but I think it's more than that. I think we're almost assured of a spot in the tennis playoffs for the 40th consecutive year. Um, we recently played Ennis with a win, and we will host Kaufman at 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Our varsity football is undefeated, and we, <laughs> we want to remind everyone that this week the Tigers play at 7 p.m. at North Garland in Garland's William, Garland's William Stadium. On Saturday, we had a junior student, Abby Walthall, perform at halftime at the Dallas Cowboys game. We're very proud of her representing um, Corsicana ISD. She was one of several hundred North Texas high school dancers who tried out and one of only a few dozen who were selected. So congratulations to Abby. I kept watching the game in hopes that I would see her. <laughs> We're looking forward to the Education Foundation Gala on Saturday, October 7th. Please contact Casey Gordon for tickets and start planning your 80s themed outfit right away. <laughs> this Monday is a school holiday and our campuses and offices will be closed, so Tigers and your families, please enjoy your three-day weekend. 
now for recognitions, we're going to begin with um, our um, students. Um, we're going to ask Ms. Johnson to come to the front, and we're going to start with our FFA students, um, Tila Polk, Harley Carlson, Macy Walker, Jackson Brown, Sarah Beck. Well, Harley Carlson is at college. Uh, Sarah Beck, and, J and um, that's it. Almost announced Jay Kelsey. Great. Sarah, you go first. It's a short version. <laughs> you can tell them what you do. Okay. Hi, my name is Sarah Beck. I'm a junior at CHS this year, and this past summer I was named as the state champion in the Agri Science Fair for Environmental and Natural Resources Division. And my, my project focuses on uh, testing which of the five additives, um, particle additives, will retain the highest amount of water. Hi, my name is Macy Walker, and I'm currently a senior at First Canada Hospital this year. I'm the uh, president for First Canada FFA, and I'm also serving as an Area 8 vice president this year. Um, because I am an Area 8 um, officer, I get to go to state or to national convention in Indianapolis this year and serve as a voting delegate um, as one of the 70 voting delegates that we have for Texas. And then um, that will represent 170,000 Texas FFA members. Hi, my name is Tila Polk. I graduated Course Canada High School in 2022. I will be receiving my American degree at National Convention. My degree is based off of my projects from swine, lambs, and pigs, as well as my current job working at a local vet clinic as a small and large animal tech. And a little fun fact is that the American degree is the highest degree and award that you can receive in FFA. Hey y'all, my name is Jackson Brown. I'm a senior this year at Corsicana. Um, I received a state championship in landscape management for my landscape management proficiency. Um, I own a landscape business and we do everything from land uh, maintenance all the way up to uh, high end landscape. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to ask the board to come to the front. 
Amazing. signifies so many good things about Carson County ISD and the conversation that I have with so many people is my firm belief proves out here tonight that quality schools are led by continuity of excellent leadership at the board and superintendent level. So uh, anyway, thank you all for doing this. Uh, Mr. President, I'll present this. <laughs> thank you. Congratulations. Uh, this, is our, this is our Region 12. Uh, plaque along with the main, uh, the, the one that comes out from the State Association. But anyway, you're recognized on both at all levels. So uh, <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Tom, come on in. We have we want to do group. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's circle around. Yeah, we'll be awesome. yeah. yeah, that's what I was talking about. Do uh, you want to come down to There we go. Yeah, we're going inside. Oh. You're trainable, just not very trainable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good picture. All right. You want to see me? Ready? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. So now we're going to go into our discussion action items, and number A is adopt the tax rate. Hello. Thanks for allowing me to speak to you on about the tax rate. Um, 
Brian, I don't know why, but there's a lot of people leaving. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 hey, they want to stick around for the fourth part. We'll give them an opportunity. Brian's got to clear a room. <laughs> You're so popular. You know? <laughs> I saw me get up, so no. <laughs> ready? Okay. So, first thing I have for you all is the 23 24 uh, tax rated option. Um, the MO tax rate for 23 24 would be 0 0.66920, uh, and that is changing from last year's 0 0.90670. Uh, the INS tax rate for 23-24 would be 0 .19509, and that is changing from last year's 0 .22530 for a total tax rate of 0 .86429, changing from last year's 1.16200. So just so the board knows, this has been a, a process. Um, we um, received the valuations. Um, I think that is um, still one of the things that they're working on since there's a large number of um, contested values on homes um, in this area. Um, we submitted our information to Region 12 Education Service Center and then got the amount recommended approved through the Texas Education Agency so we know that we're where we need to be as far as our tax rate. I did just want to reiterate that this is something that we have been discussing um, for several weeks now. This isn't new. And also that the, the beast of um, school finance is not as simple as one might think. In fact, it's incredibly, incredibly difficult and confusing purposefully. So um, I just want to remind those that are listening that uh, we don't get to come up with our own tax rate or make it even lower than we want to. We, we school finance, are unable to do that. We are given our tax rate by the state, is that not correct? correct? And then approved by them. So we are unable to do anything else but what we're approved with, correct? Correct. Okay, just wanted to make sure. And so for, um, from 2022 to 2023 to this year, it looks like we're dropping it by 0.29771. Correct. It's almost 30 cents. Almost 30 cent decrease. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, is there any more questions for Brian or any discussion amongst this? If not, we've had it posted for the proper amount of time, so I'll entertain a motion. I move that the course can ISD adopt a resolution to set the MO tax rate of 0 0.66920 per $100 valuation for the 2023 2024 school year and the resolution to set the INS tax rate at 0 0.19509 per $100 valuation for the 2023 2024 school year. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. To set the to adopt the resolution to set the MO tax rate to 0 0.66920 per $100 valuation for the 2023 24 school year, and the resolution to set the INS tax rate, which is 0 0.19509 per $100 valuation for the 2023 24 school year. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Eyes have it, and we have adopted the new tax rate of 0 0.66920 for the MO, and the INS side is 0 0.19509. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Now we're going to move to the budget. So you might as well stay there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next thing I have for you is the 2324 proposed budget. Um, Y'all have seen um, preliminary versions of this, but we have um, taken your guidance on the uh, proposed raise and uh, put that in place here so you can see 
um, all that's in place. Um, looking at revenue, um, we have conservatively estimated that revenue. Um, as you can see, the state funding is going up uh, quite a bit, um, and local funding is going down that, from the tax rate. You can see it lowering. Um, the enrollment numbers we are using for this estimation is a 6,100 enrollment, which we are right there at it, so that's, that's perfect, and an ADA of about 91.75. So we, we think that's very, 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 very doable. Um, looking down at the expenditures, um, all our departments, um, campuses, we, we kept those spending um, at prior year levels. Um, the main changes you see there are the, the approved raises that we gave across across the board. Um, even with that said, you can see we're, we're still showing a, a pretty healthy um, surplus there, about $150,000. Um, and and I, and I feel optimistic, you know, that we can we can continue to work on the ADA and even even see that revenue come up even more. So um, I feel very comfortable with those numbers. Um, if you look over on the second page to 240 and 599, both of those funds are, are healthy. They're they're both um, showing increases. The uh, revenue and, and 240 continues to go up with with Stephanie working with them to to continue to. To, to see improvements there. Food costs have gone up as well, but we're offsetting that with, with a lot more revenue and, and finding ways to, to make it work. 599, um, you know, that, that's on our INS tax rate. That, that kind of takes care of itself, but we're still showing to, to have plenty of money there to make our, our bond payments for the current, for upcoming years. So, um, any questions? Or? I would just like to say thank you for your work on this. Thank you to our campuses for being uh, good stewards um, of our money. We were at a conference this past week, and there are a lot of districts that are not able to pass a balanced budget. We were the only ones. We were the only ones. We were the only ones. And, and these are Arlington, Katy, mm -hmm. and there are millions and millions of dollars uh, over budget. And it, it, I don't know how they're going to make it if, if our state doesn't do something with funding. So I appreciate your hard work. I know the whole board does. Um, I mean, that makes us sleep a lot better at night, knowing that we were able to pass a, a balanced budget. Thank you. Appreciate it. We tightened, the, we tightened the belt many years ago during COVID, and I know it hurt. Mm -hmm. But we're reaping the rewards today because of that. We, we, we cut where we could. So I appreciate all the hard work in you know, all of you. And still yeah. able to give raises. Yeah, yeah. still able to give still raises. Still able to give raises and pay for their insurance. Yeah. Yes. So I appreciate all the hard work that you all have, you know, this whole cabinet's done to put it together, but then all the schools that have made the sacrifices, all the, all the faculty members. Appreciate it. So there's no more discussion. I'll entertain that motion <laughs> to pass a balanced budget. I move that we approve the 2023-24 budget as presented. Second. Okay, I got a motion and a second to approve the 2023-24 budget as presented. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. Ayes have it, and we've approved the 2023-24 budget. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Okay, the communication department report. Good evening. Dr. Brown, Dr. Frost, members of the board, thank you for having me tonight on a night that really belongs to you. Congratulations again. Kind of felt like Brian did when everybody walked out, but now after all that good news, I felt like the band that plays outside the stadium before everybody walks in. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of communications the last 10 months. Uh, I took over in November uh, when Veronica left. And so here are some of the highlights. Uh, our, I feel like our team is finally set. Uh, we added Michael in June, brought him over from the newspaper. He was the editor at the Course Canada Daily Sun, a uh, role I had a few years ago. And of course, Anna is our third person, and Anna is kind of the glue that keeps us together. She'll celebrate her year anniversary next month. And uh, she takes care of all of our billing. She actually does most of our posting. We might generate the content, but Anna posts it. She also takes care of our loose ends, which I would lump Michael and myself in the loose ends as well. So uh, the kind of the, the theme right now among school PR, uh, the kind of the calling card is telling stories, telling the stories of your district. 
And those three faces you saw there have about 30 months of combined experience uh, in school PR. But I think the good news is that Michael and I have about 40 years combined experience of storytelling. So I feel like that gives us a base. And uh, you know, the, I think the other good thing about having Michael uh, here with us now is that he's not going anywhere. He's got family here. He's rooted here. He's a course can of graduate. He has a two-year-old son who one day will be a tiger. And uh, we can actually build something long-term together. The last seven months of school, uh, we only had two employees for the three of them, Anna and myself. Y'all remember Zach. Zach was here for three months. Felt like we maintained an acceptable level, level of coverage during those uh, three months. Uh, one of the, the key things we did during the spring was we took our tip tool. I think it was a little hard to find, and we embedded that at the top of our website. It's now buttoned by district home and campuses. And it's also on all of our social media pages. It's pinned at the top of them. So anybody has an issue, they should be able to find that tip tool very easy now. Uh, we negotiated a new website contract. Uh, the initial contract uh, and what we eventually signed was about $23,000 less. I was able to negotiate that down. It is a five-year contract, but nevertheless, we're going to save money over that term. I really think you're going to like the new website, too, but we'll talk more about it in just a little bit. We added uh, always on a chat bot. We call it Tiger Chat. If you haven't noticed, it's at the bottom of the right. It surprises me how effective that tool is. You know, today and this day and age, a lot of people don't want to talk to a human being. They don't want to see another human being, so they use that. In August alone, that thing has 645 questions that have been asked of it. Uh, so it, it, I, every time I look at the analytics, it just amazes me at how many people are using that. Uh, by the way, we did have a six-month free trial on, on it, and uh, I think it's worth keeping. Dr. Frost and I have discussed it. Uh, we will, uh, it'll, we'll actually start paying for it in September. So, but we did get six months to, to, to have a trial with it. Our social media numbers, these are Facebook only. These are the last 90 days. 75% of our users are women. Uh, more than half are between the ages of 25 and 54, and almost 6,000 of our users are from Corsicana. Uh, our website numbers just the past year, June to June. I was actually supposed to do this in July, by the way, but when the date changed, I was in St. Louis. But more than uh, 650,000 of our, vi our website visits and more than 830,000 page views. It's quite a bit for a little district like ours. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about content distribution. Like I said, I feel like we've, we've maintained a, a good level even when we were short. Uh, CISO is a consultant of ours uh, that we hired after Susan left and, and we were short an employee uh, and also helped in the search for, for a Susan's replacement, they say a district our size should have about 15 posts a week. So the week in question here is the week of April 9th. We had 16 posts. If you add the athletic calendar we started in November, it runs every Sunday. It's varsity games. That got us to the 16th. But that's a, that's a normal week for us. Then, sorry, if you look at the week of April 30th, we had 35 posts. And I think, I don't have to tell you guys how busy it becomes in the spring here. I've gone through two, and it's, uh, it's, it's quite chaotic. So uh, I would like to say this is a normal week in the spring. Might be a little abnormal, but the key to this week is this was the first week we didn't have Zach, and we were still able to put out that kind of content. It helps having Anna actually do all the posting for us. I can write it, Michael can write it, we can shoot the pictures, but she just takes it and she, she'll handle the rest of it. By the way, if y'all haven't met her, she's probably one of the more resourceful people I know. Uh, she's not scared of anything and she can do anything. Yes, she's, yeah, she gets pulled out quite a bit uh, to, for Spanish translation, answers bus calls when they're in Spanish and that type of stuff. So the 11, last seven weeks of school, we averaged 24.6 posts per week. And again, that last, that last month of school, we didn't have, uh, it was just Anna and myself. So, some of our summer projects, if any of you have ever been in our office prior to the summer and walked through that little long narrow closet, uh, good luck if you made it to the other end. It was unbelievably crowded, Le uh, probably 10 years worth of, of uh, accumulation. First thing Anna did when we got back from summer vacation was clear that thing out. The only thing that we have in the way now is CEF stuff, and we're not sure what to do with it just yet but because of the change there. But not only is it decluttered now our entire office, but she personally knows where everything is in there and what we have in there, and that's great. Uh, today I needed something, she went right to it. I, wouldn't, I would have had to look, but she knew exactly where it was. We finalized a district-wide appreciation calendar. If you've ever had to deal with appreciation calendars, they come in all sizes, shapes, and forms. There's a national calendar, there's a state one. This year we adopted one just for the district and sent that out to the school so that we can all be uniform. 
Uh, we're developing a primary graphic template when I finish this. Uh, it was in the development stage. I think we finally found one I like. It'll, it'll come out Thursday when we announce that school's, a reminder that school is closed on Thursday. So I think that's the one we're going to stick with. We might tweak it a little bit. Another funny story, Anna designed it. Uh, and she's not a graphic artist, but she does get in there and play. She'll, she'll have me 10 examples when I need something before I even ask her for anything. Uh, our goal is to generate a full year of basic graphics and make them available to all the schools. We're still working on that. We didn't quite get there. That was a big goal we had for Zach in the summer. He was going to do all of our graphics, Christmas, uh, spring break, and just have all those ready so that when uh, a school wanted to send out their newsletter, because they usually do it at the first of the month, they would have all that available to them. Uh, they wouldn't have to make their own and we wouldn't have to send it to them. Uh, we also wanted to uh, uh, retool the ISD newsletter. That has been more challenging than I expected. The program we use for that is very tedious, but we hope to start it right after Labor Day. Uh, here's the athletic uh, platform we uh, developed on social media. It's called At Course Canada Tigers 903, except on X, because uh, it's space restrictive. It's at CSD Tigers 903. We already have about 600 people following us on Facebook. It's a little harder to tell on, on uh, the traction's not as great on uh, Instagram and, and X right now, but it's, but it's growing. Uh, summer project, well, am I going backwards? Oh, I'm sorry, I had that in there. I was supposed to click to it and then go back to the other list. My apologies. Future, website conversion by next summer. We just talked about that. We will actually start that process in the spring and it'll happen over the, over the summer. I think you're really gonna like it. It's gonna streamline that website. Uh, I probably don't have to tell you how convoluted that thing can be and how hard it can be to find something. You might try the chat bot next time you look for something. Uh, but I think the, the final site um, templates they, they have are so much more user friendly than what we have right now. And the back end uh, is drastically improved. It, it's gonna be so much easier for us to do stuff as well. As part of the conversion, we're moving away from School Messenger as our primary mass communication platform. Final Sight has uh, their own, which ironically is called mass communications. Uh, again, much easier. Uh, take for example in February when, when we will invariably have to announce some bad weather days unless it falls on the fall break like it usually does that week. Uh, in the past, I would have to post to the website, post to social media, and do school messenger, a three-step process. Mass Communications does them all in one, in one push of the button. So, uh, we're, we're further developing our department. We want to be uber organized. Uh, at Admin Academy this summer, I uh, used two acronyms at the end of the academy. One was uh, ER and the other one was PM. Uh, last year, in, in the spring that I, when I came aboard, it felt like I worked in an ER. It was always just something coming in, something coming in. We're trying to get to the PM, the preventative maintenance. We want to be ahead of that curve, not, you know, not reacting all the time. And I feel like we're already moving that way. Hone our video skills. Michael's already a lot further along with video than I was in, in two months, probably even at six months, maybe a year. So he's getting better at that. And I think that's another thing that we'll always improve or keep improving. Uh, and we want to spend the majority of our time just promoting the districts and its initiative. Uh, we want to do a lot of campaigns. We have one that's currently running uh, about attendance. The first one ran last week, the ne uh, two weeks ago actually. The second one will run this week on Thursday and then, the, and then the third installment of that attendance campaign will run two weeks after that. We've also started a Did You Know uh, campaign that will keep running. The chat bot's going to be one of those coming up. And, uh, and that's kind of where we want to go. Just again, tell our story through campaigns and uh, not be so reactionary all the time. So I tried to keep that as brief as possible. So I'd be glad to answer any questions uh, you may have of me. Yeah, it, we thought about a, a fall conversion over the uh, Christmas break, but decided not to. So it might be a little soon. I, I thought Final Sight was very gracious. They gave a young staff some time to get our, our feet planted in what we do every day without trying to take on that. We're, we're going through the mass communication training already, and we'll have our third call on Wednesday with them. IT's involved in that. And it's really not the process of getting the message out. It's all the back end data. That's, you know, Chris and Juan have to be involved. And uh, uh, JP, sorry. Juan, Juan Contreras went to school with my kids. He's still Juan to me. but, but. Um, but yeah, it's that, that back end stuff of data feeds and, and getting all that information, that's the tedious part. Once we get that part done, we'll launch mass communications. And the website, hopefully, we talked about this on our last call, we'll have already have uh, acquired a lot of that data that they're gonna need for the conversion, and hopefully it'll go pretty smooth. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond.
All right. Additional agenda items for the September 11th, 2023 regular meeting. Because we're not meeting the following Since Monday. It's only meeting. It's only meeting for September. Because of the conference. Because of the conference. So, and Labor Day. Okay. All right. So then we have consent agenda. Then Does anyone want to approve the consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, we get a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it and we've approved the consent agenda. Ms. Harrison, do we have any audience for guests? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. We're going to go into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551.01. Thank you very much.